Hey everyone, it's Heath from the History Seekers. Welcome back to another edition. We are going to show you guys today how we clean our iron relics and specifically the stuff that's really rusty. Now, whether you dig something up metal detecting or you just found an old tool in your shed that you want to clean up, get all the rust off, get it back to new, we're going to show you how we do it. If you like this kind of video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. We're doing reverse electrolysis. It's not really electrolysis. Electrolysis would be like if you were plating a car bumper or making uh, uh, gold-plated jewelry. That's electrolysis, plating. Reverse electrolysis, you're unplating, and that's what we're doing. It's more of a mechanical cleaning than anything else. Now, if you do it really slow for like maybe a year at real low current, then that migrates the sulfides and salt out of the metal and that's that's a different thing but that's not what we're talking about we're just talking about sort of a mechanical cleaning over a day two days a few days and we're going to clean uh loosen up rust and get rid of it and people i've noticed say don't use stainless well that's a mistake use stainless go to uh buy you one of these things made out of stainless. They're cheap. This is all you need. And then you cut you a piece pieces of PVC to hold it off the bottom, the object that you're going to be cleaning. You can cut different ones for different things. Hold it off the bottom so it doesn't short out. Then this is a rig here that, that I've used forever and it's a plastic bucket with the water in it and inside of it is a piece of stainless that goes around and also I see people particularly doing wrong is they'll put a piece of rebar in there and think that's working right it'll clean one side if you do that uh, electrolysis is directional so that's why it needs to go all the way around whatever you're trying to do that's why this pot is good because it goes all the way around and underneath and so one of these is basically what you would start with you just need that. So said I've got a, a voltage regulator that I can control the voltage to the charger and, and that way I can adjust the, the current flow that I want and read it on the meter. But he tells me that there's a new uh, type of uh, battery charger that has a sort of a built-in uh, regulator and you can uh, adjust it. So uh, that sounds like it would work good. Yeah, we're, we're going to put a link to that in the description box below. Now I've got it flipped on and I've got these uh, everything's messed up here but it's everything's just where I want it it took me 40 50 years to get this stuff in the right place now I've got this turned on I'm getting a the uh, plus connector is on the, the stainless pan and uh, current flows from negative to positive and your your black leads generally are your negative leads and current's going to flow from negative to positive and that's what we're trying to do just think in terms of the current flowing that way and that's the way we're trying to get stuff to come off so this lead will go on the object or wire that we hook up to the object but right now see the spark that shows me i got a connection and so now when we get the uh Get them ball wherever it is hooked up we're going to put it in there and uh, show you how that how that works now steve we're going to be doing a, a rare shell we're going to be doing the sawyer shell today that i found tell but, them a little bit about how we're going to do this one different and why we're doing it different from a regular just a just a solid shot cannonball or something like that okay this is a a, a really really nice sawyer bolt it's not a shell it's a bolt it doesn't blow up it's solid and it's coated with uh, lead and you can see where the rifling when it was fired it 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 was originally smooth but when it was fired the rifling it took here and it looks really good you can actually see both kinds here and on this one you can see the patent date on the bottom and what we want to do is leave this oxidation on the um, on the lead, and we want to take off this uh, buildup on of rust and 
stuff on the iron and that's all we're gonna do we're gonna hook up I'm gonna try to hook up with a hose clamp here and some wire and get a connection then hang it and hang it in the water to the level that it does not get over the lead and, and hopefully we won't mess up any of the oxidation and we'll just clean this part so let me get that set up so any anything that's in the water is going to be cleaned and they add uh, like it. well anything metal right oh uh, yeah okay we've got this hooked up now with a hose clamp around here I didn't have to drill any holes I didn't have to a lot of people drill holes and everything and put a, a, a wood screw in it and then hook up to that that's fine but I didn't have to I could make a good connection and I just hung it from this wire and uh, we don't want the, the lead part to go in the water we just want that part to, to go in the water so we'll be able to hang it like this and then I'll, I'll hook uh, the uh, negative lead onto this and we don't want that alligator clip to get in the water either because it'll just eat them up real quick you want to keep them out of the water the only thing you want is your wire going uh, making a connection so let me see what we're going to need here uh, we put the bolt down in the uh, uh, electrolysis in, in the water and it's uh, the water's coming up just almost to the lid or just to the edge of it and uh, so we're just going to should be cleaning the iron now when we take this connector and hook it up to the wire I'm watching this meter or somebody to watch it and it's gonna move up just a little bit and we're running right now at about a maybe a half amp which is about fine this would probably take about one day it's uh, we're really not pe people think that electrolysis like this is really preserving your relic it's not uh, that's not what it's doing at all. You you preserve the relic after you get this iron off, I mean this rust, get it off and, and whatever else is built on, up on there. Then a real key thing to do is to boil it in fresh water over and over. That does get rid of salts and sulfides as much as it can. Now you would do that on any iron, whether you're talking about uh, whatever you know it, it would uh, it would need boiling like that if you don't want it 10 or 20 years down the road to just fall apart yeah, we got some bubbles there yeah I'm gonna disconnect it and don't want to touch that there but you lead over here and you connect the negative to what you're trying to clean and the positive to the stainless. Yeah, it took a good bit off. Well, look how easy that comes off now. That was going be a little more difficult, but it just sloughs right off there. And we only had it running, what about? Four hours? Probably not even that, probably about two. Maybe three. Oh, it's more than that, I guess. Yeah, maybe. See, all we that's just cleaning up perfect. Come visit with you, I lose track of time, Steve. He's, this is done. I think so. Only thing I would do now with it is, uh, is I'd boil it in water some, and uh, probably take a piece of uh, PVC, small, if you got any, cut a piece of uh, PVC pipe, stick it down in a pan, put some water in it, and and just let the water come up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know what that uh, boiling water would do to the the white oxidation so I just stick it nose down and boil it over and over mm -hmm. and just clean that off which nothing you can do that real easy just just clean it off uh, no, no problem and then uh, when you finish boiling it many times and getting 
make sure it's gonna be here in a hundred years when you're an old man and uh, then put your Gimpler's rust converter on the iron. Right. Don't do anything to the to the, to the white. And you all done. Pretty easy, huh? That's easy enough. Steve, I appreciate it. That didn't take long at all. No. Well, I didn't think it'd take long. That was so uh, nice anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you showing everybody that. Oh, no problem. And, guys, if you want to see more and more detailed stuff, go over to Steve Phillips' channel. And we're going to put a link in the description box, as I said earlier, below. And subscribe to him and subscribe to us. And we'll have more videos. I've been doing this for right at 50 years, and I have done uh, an awful lot of preserving uh, specifically iron, and I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes. And I, I look on Facebook now, and I see that uh, a lot of people have uh, formed opinions, uh, and, and they're still doing things the way we did them 50 years ago. And so I wanted to tell people why you don't do the things like you used to. When you're doing electrolysis, you do not use lye. Lye is what we used 50 years ago, and it works, but it causes as much problems as it, as it helps. You do not use ice cream salt. Ice cream salt con conducts really well, and it will look like it's working good, but what you're trying to get rid of is salts, sulfides, and uh, so you, you don't want to use anything like that. You use water. It don't need to be distilled water. We're not building an atom bomb or nothing. And you just use regular old water and you use baking soda. The, the yellow box, of course this one's faded out too much, but at one time that was yellow. You use baking soda. Now it doesn't conduct as good as ice cream salt. It doesn't matter because you, you have to stir it up. Uh, it does settle in there.